Param pa param. Did it not catch up? Oh, yeah. Oh, there it goes. Okay. It wasn't showing up for a minute there. Got a little consigned. Got a little consigned. Uh, okay. I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of um, <clears throat> sharing around today. I'll, I'll probably share to a few spots. Uh, but uh, if you could, if you are watching, hit the like button, hit the share button. Uh, tell some people to come join the stream. You can also invite people to the stream. That's a thing you can do on Facebook. So if, uh, uh, if, you, if you have not done that, that would be cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, I can't. They, uh, they changed the way that you share stuff on Facebook now. What a bunch of idiots. Uh, thank you for joining us. Give me a few moments. I'm going to do the awkward thing where I am staring to a different place and, uh, and sharing this thing out to a couple different places. Like I said, won't be doing a whole lot of the sharing situation. But if you could, that would be uh, very, very helpful. It's always helpful when, when the peeps that watch share this thing while I do my awkward, awkward little thing that I, that I do uh, with this thing. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'll probably share two, two of the groups that I normally do and then one or two of the other sort of mental health groups that I'm a part of. and then invite some people. So give me just a few moments. Stay tuned. Hang in there, folks. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably do a check-in in just a few minutes. If you guys want to um, type your check-ins in, uh, talk about how you're doing, what you're excited about, what you're not excited about, so on and so forth, the usual check-in stuff, and then we can look at them and, and talk about them together and, um, and, and, and be present with you as well. So, yeah, if you, if you would like to do that, that's, uh, that's cool. If you, if you don't want to do that, that's also uh, totally fine. Um, I usually start with the check-ins, so that's why, uh, I, I, I figured I would ask you guys to, to check in on these live streams that I've been doing, uh, make it like a fun little thing, but you don't have to essentially. All right. Invite some of the regular viewers. All right, I'm going to drop uh, the usual little comment thingies there, and then we will uh, we'll get started. Um, thank you for thank you for waiting. Thank you for hanging out. A uh, couple of the links coming in. Um, one's a donation link. One's the link to my album. If you would like to uh, uh, to 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 pre-order it for a dollar, and then the other one is. Um, a, the, the link to the May 22nd virtual stand-up comedy show that you can grab tickets for as well. 
Uh, and uh, let's uh, let's let's start getting into it. Oh, thank you for sharing, Dolores. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Hi, Jesse. Uh, Jesse is part of Lori Creek, and she does solo stuff, and she's awesome. Uh, and you should uh, you should all go follow Lori Creek because they're great. Uh, so <laughs> that's that's my plug for for Jesse. Hi, Jesse. It's good to see you. Uh, so. As, uh, as as you might have noted from the title and the description of this thing, this is going to be kind of a, a heavy, heavy episode. And I'll see if I get through this without crying. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, today is um, the... 10 year death anniversary of my friend Bobby, who I, holy shit, I knew this kid for a long time. Um, and, uh, and we were like super, super close. Uh, he's basically like family. Uh, he's basically like the little brother that I never had kind of thing. Um, you know, like the closest thing I was going to get to like, uh, uh, a younger brother kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, and uh, 10 years ago, unfortunately, uh, he committed suicide. So that so this story kind of revolves around that. And uh, it's it's about what happened 10 years ago and how it basically affected, um, you know, everything uh, about my life, because it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty defining moment for me. Um, and uh, yeah, so so there's going to be a lot of like mental health stuff. We're going to address suicide and talk about that a little bit in this episode. So if that is a uh, sensitive topic for you, um, you know, uh, feel free to step away and come back later or, or not come back or whatever, whatever you need to do to kind of uh, take care of, you know, your, yourself when, when these sort of themes come up. I know it's sort of a sensitive topic for, for some folks. Um, for, for a long time, it, it definitely was something that I didn't address, and I will get into that part of the story. But, uh, yeah, so uh, Bobby was – and by the way, I'm probably going to change a bunch of names for the uh, sake of anonymity uh, because I don't know if these – if the folks that are involved in the story would want their names to be out in the public. So we are probably going to uh, change names, and I'm going to try to take notes on, like, what names I changed it to. Um, that was something that I wanted to do, and I uh, – and it's up my mind until, until this very moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, so usually what, what I would do on this day is is go uh, to the park. I would kind of spend this day um, reflecting and thinking about stuff. I would also try to spend this day uh, trying to trying to get on stage um, to do some stand up, but that is unfortunately um, not an availability we have um, in in today's um, today's climate. So. Oh, comments. Uh, leave your comments, and sporadically throughout this uh, this episode, I'll read a couple of them. I can do this. Like Sandra. Hello, Sandy. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. Uh, we'll pop them up on the screen and read them and so everybody kind of knows what we're saying and what we're talking about. So um, let's get into the story. Uh so 10 years ago, I had a friend of mine, uh, Bobby. I knew this kid for a long time. Like, Bobby was probably one of the most supportive human beings to, like, uh, to, to all things comedy that I did. And so I started when I was uh, 16, if you don't know. I, I started in high school, and Bobby was, like, one of the most supportive individuals of me doing comedy along with a bunch of my friends and my sister and my mom and stuff. Um, but that kid never missed a show. That kid like came to virtually every single one of my shows that I would do um, in 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 the in the early days of comedy. <laughs> he um, he never missed. He he saw the first show that I did at the talent show. He would come with me to. Uh, he would sometimes come with me to the coffee shop open mic. I never made him come, but whenever he did want to come, um, you know, it'd be like we'd have to coordinate our rides because you know, I didn't, I didn't have a car. He didn't have a car. 
So we were very dependent on like our parents coordinating some shit. Uh, but he would like come hang out there. Uh, and he was basically friends with like everyone. I, um, I don't remember him having a lot of enemies in high school. I think he was a pretty, like pretty, pretty well-liked kid, but he never thought he was well-liked. Like it was one of those situations where I don't think he realized like how much people liked him. Um, but I met this kid, I met Bobby, when the fuck did I meet Bobby? I think I might have been like in the 7th or 8th grade maybe when I met him. And he was one or two classes behind me. Um, and we we just ended up hanging out and playing Halo. I'm not good at video games. Uh, I'm, I'm not particularly like, I'm, I'm especially not good at like first person shooter games. That's just not my, I'm not very good at uh at those but bobby was uh, the hand-eye coordination that it takes to to play these games is partly um partly the problem but like bobby was really fucking good at them so eventually like what would happen is i would devolve to specifically go and um like make sure that i make sure that i wouldn't get people killed like i would bait i would bait them and then I would jump off the screen so that so it was like this frustrating act for no reason. Uh, and the only person that found that hilarious uh, was Bobby because uh, <laughs> everybody was bothered by it. Like I would bait them to be the easy kill to get them points. And then I would jump off the screen so that they wouldn't get the easy kill. Uh, so <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I. I he every time I would come home from college, he was the first person that I saw. I would call him first, and we would we planned something. Uh, I, even if it was just getting in our cars and going for a drive uh, for like three hours, listening to music and bullshitting and talking about like life and uh, and girls and fucking classes and all the stupid shit that we would we would talk about. Um, when when you're when you're you know when you're in your when you're in your in your teenage years like that's um that's basically what you do uh and the, or we would like hang out and watch movies and stuff like that was always the thing that we did um so you know and i felt like bobby was the only person that kind of knew a couple things about me when i was in college that i don't think a lot of other people within our friend circle really knew for example um, I felt pretty out of place in a lot of friend circles. I feel, I feel that, I mean, that, that really hasn't changed though. Like I feel out of place in a lot of like normal settings. I just don't, I just don't fit into a lot of normal settings. Like I have a core group of people that I like, uh, talking to and hanging out with. And then, you know, like if I go to like a party or something, like I just feel so fucking awkward and out of place. Like I, I, it just, you know, but I was starting to feel that way with, with a core group of friends that we had. Um, so Bobby would invite me to, uh, hang out with some other folks, the folks that we, we called ourselves the nerds because, um, uh, we were nerds. <laughs> so, um, and there, and there was, this was like a massive fucking group of people too, like, and we all kind of became little family and we and there was like a little subsection of of each of us that would go do different things when all of us weren't meeting up together um so uh you know there was a core group of us and like i said i'm changing i'm changing some na names here um uh so we had bobby me uh, we'll say Adam and Rocky. Uh, those are uh, <laughs> those are those are the two names I'm gonna go with, uh, and and that was like the our our little subsect um, that we would go and and go hang out and we would play video games and watch anime and and all this sort of stuff, um, and uh, I'm just writing down the name so I don't forget who who I have referred to as what. Uh, I mean, everything was fine for a long time. Like, I mean, most of college, I would go hang out with these folks all the time. I would go hang out with them when I would come home. Um, one of the one of our one of the classic things to do was me, Adam, 
Rocky and Bobby would go to Eaton Park and fucking sit there till all hours of the night. Uh, there was actually points where, where Bobby got an internship at a hospital once. And uh, I know I'm kind of going all over the place. Uh, but I, and I'm going to get to the, the, the meat of everything in, in a second. Um, but we would go, he would, he would, he interned at a hospital and he would call me and I was working at Starbucks at the time. So I would, I, and I would work closing shifts a lot. Uh, so I would be, I wouldn't be done with work until 1145 midnight. Uh, and that's when I would be getting off work and he would get off around like 1231 o'clock in the morning. So I would uh, I would meet up with him and we would sit there and he would order a molten lava cake. Uh, that's what he ordered all the time. He ordered a molten lava cake and I would get a cup of coffee and a pie and we would sit there and bullshit and we and he would <laughs> essentially tell me like the craziest stories. And then oh, man, the one night I remember him I remember him saying for whatever reason that night I think there were like four or five cases where people had put things inside their butts. And, and that was like the funniest fucking thing to him. Like nothing was funnier, uh, than having to deal with, uh, with people that had put things up their butts and then I got stuck and he had to like watch the doctor fucking try to get these things out and like try to talk to them. Uh, who was it? I think, I think the funniest thing was the doctor that he was working with had to like pretend like this was just like a normal thing <laughs> and have like a normal conversation which i can't imagine doing fucking at all there's no way there's no way i would i would like if you put things up your butt i would just be like you put a you put a remote control up what did you think was going to happen it's too big maybe don't put things in there that's not the thing that it's supposed to do <laughs> like i don't know you could hold a straight face and talk to them so I mean, this was like we would hang out all the we we would hang out all the fucking time, um, and I and here's the thing, up till the day. So this was May seventeenth, twenty ten. Up till that day, um, me, Adam, and Rocky were always kind of like mm, something seems off, because Bobby would do this particular thing uh, during um, during the summers that he'd been doing for a while, like uh, at least like a year or two before. We would come home and we would hang out and we would see each other and we play our video games or go for drives or whatever we would do. And then like during the Christmas break or Easter break or whatever, um, in the years leading up to 2010, he would do this thing called going AWOL where we would just like wouldn't hear from him for like two or three days. Um, and um, we just wouldn't see him for a while. And, you know, like and then he would just pop back up. And he, everything would be fine. And we didn't know what the fuck was going on, but we called it going AWOL. And then we also like, we then use that as like a, a term of whenever we needed our personal space. Like if I had, like when I was working at Starbucks, if I had a bunch of shifts lined up and I was particularly stressed out and I didn't want to see anybody, I would just say, hey, I'm going AWOL for tonight and tomorrow. I'll see you guys on, you know, Wednesday or whatever. And everybody knew like this was just time for Krish to take his space and take this day off. So we ended up using that as like a term to be like, we need our distance from each other. Uh, and then we also would tell Bobby that if he's going to plan on doing that, he should also fucking uh, let us know that he's going to go AWOL <laughs> so that we don't have to worry about him. And, uh, and there were a couple times that he did. And there were a couple times that he uh, did not. Um, and the times that he did not were the times that we would kind of get worried and, and freak out that particular summer, a decade ago, I do remember there were a couple of instances where he had gotten a wall for a while, like, uh, like all of spring break. And then we literally had to like go to his house and knock on his door to be like, what is going on? We haven't seen you in like a fucking week, dude. Like, what's up? What's happening? Mind you, I'm like 20 at this point, right? 20, 21, something along those lines. Um, you know, um, Adam and Rocky are like 18, 19. Bobby's, Bobby's about 18, 19. So we like kind of didn't really know what mental health, good mental health coping skills were. Like we were still kind of learning that sort of shit. Uh, 
so so us going to his house when he was probably like depressed and needed to be away from people and just wanted to like spend time alone i remember that because when we showed up to his house he came out with like with like a beard and we were like you can grow a beard <laughs> like what the fuck like he didn't take care of his uh, you know like he didn't give a shit about his physical appearance I'm pretty sure he was like in clothes that he had been he'd been in for a couple of days. And he's like he was like astounded that we were even there. So we were concerned that something was going on with him that he wasn't telling us uh, or that he was becoming Batman. Those were the only two things uh, that made sense to us. Bobby was obsessed with Batman, by the way. Bobby was obsessed with Batman. And uh he so we were like either something's going on with him that he's not telling us or he is batman uh he's going on like night patrols and shit uh that's a thing that he might be doing so we would have these conversations about it and i would try to kind of talk to him to be like what's up what's going on one of the things that bobby and i would do is whenever i had my uh it was called a mid shift it's like 3.30 to 9.30 or something like that. Um, and that was that was like the mid-shift at, uh, at, at Starbucks. And I would, um, I would go to Bobby's house at like noon or something. And we would sit and just like watch a movie together. That was like a thing that we did. Uh, a couple different times we did this. I watched Goldeneye with him again. And holy shit, did that movie not hold up. Uh, that movie's not, not very great. <laughs> I don't remember, like, I remember watching it with them, but just going, like, I used, I thought this movie was way fucking cooler when I was, when I was, like, younger, and, uh, <laughs> so, so, but I would try to talk to him and ask him, like, how he was doing and what was going on with him. Um, there was actually a point over the summer where, man, he got super hammered, uh, and I had to, like, take care of him. Uh, and the next day he was so embarrassed about, uh, and he told me some stuff that I'm not going to, like, I, I promised him I'd never tell anybody and I'm going to hold up to that promise. Uh, so that one goes to, to the grave with me. Um, and, uh, he was like so embarrassed about it that he woke up at six o'clock in the morning, hung over as all hell, and then like busted out of the, the house that we were all at. Uh, and I basically had to play babysitter because there were just too many truck people at this party with like no supervision at all. Uh, so I ended up playing babysitter that night and, you know, making sure that everybody was okay. Uh, honestly, like that was kind of hilarious uh, in a way because a lot of people were just like, oh my God, what happened? And I was like, now I get to tell you all the things. Like I kind of, it was kind of funny about that. Uh, but he like peaced out and I had to go track him down. Uh, and we met up at, at an Eaton Park after that party. Uh, but he was just like, there was so much, I don't know. There was just a lot of conflict within him that I don't think I saw uh, at that point. He bought a chain whip at one point. Bobby was into martial arts a lot. Uh, he was into martial arts a lot. So when he would go AWOL, he would do, he would, he would practice his martial arts and stuff. Uh, we actually started a fight club at one point. Uh, this is not my proudest accomplishment as a, as a human being. Uh, but we did stupid shit, like start a fight club and he was taking Muay Thai and he knew how to fight. And I, uh, I don't know if you can tell, uh, fucking don't. So, uh, but one of the things that he would always say is like, uh, he, he, he what was it? He said, it's fun to fight you because you don't know when to back down. And that's exciting. Cause I don't know what you're going to do. And I was like, oh, okay. So like, that's a weird way to say that you're dumb. Um, and <laughs> so I would get my ass beat by him all the time. I think the reason why he started fight club was just to trick his friends, uh, into letting us let him beat the shit out of us like that's the only reason why he did it and uh yeah so <laughs> i uh so he would go awol we found him he grew a beard he bought a chain whip and then he had to buy goggles uh because when you use a chain whip uh 
you, you can hurt your eyeballs <laughs> because the chain whip would come and smack you in the eye. So you had to buy goggles. And then he goes into his backyard and like shows us how to use a chain whip. And then he accidentally like whipped himself. I was just like, what is happening? You're like, this is what you're doing with your free time. And he's like, yep, this is what excites me nowadays. Uh, so we kind of had a sneaky suspicion that something was going on. The last night that I got to hang out with him, um, we went to our friend uh, Cassie's place. And um, we were all just going to kind of hang out and have a have a low-key night. Uh, you know, everybody had gotten back from school. I think it was like maybe the first week that we had all been home together. Um, and... I, I was always the guy that showed up on time because I am uh, I'm a bit of a spaz when it comes to that sort of stuff. Like I try to be on time uh, to to do stuff. Uh, so I would always show up on time, but everybody else would kind of show up late. That was just sort of a thing that happened in our group. Like we would say like, hey, we're meeting at 6 p.m. And a bunch of people, like a majority of people would show up at like 6.30, right? Like that was just like a thing. <laughs> uh that that we figured would happen so i showed up early and then bobby showed up early and bobby was one of those people that would kind of show up late um and i was very surprised and we sat there uh and what was funny was <laughs> bobby wasn't a very like touchy-feely kind of guy uh which made me want to be touchy-feely all the time so i would like give him big hugs uh, and, and like, give them like these, like th the most wet kisses on the cheeks that you could possibly imagine, just because I knew it made them uncomfortable. <laughs> they would get all like weird and gross out. Uh, and I would like snuggle up with them on the couch and shit. Uh, that was, and that was just like a thing that we did. And eventually, um, uh, eventually like he kind of would be like, all right, I'm going to snuggle in too. And, and so we would like cuddle. So that's what we did. We, we like hung out on the couch and we were like snuggling up and shit. And, he, and there was no resistance from him. Cause usually that's how it started. It would usually start with resistance. And I was just like, all right, cool. Like we're just hanging out. We're just, we're just two bros cuddling down on the couch, uh, with our, with our friend Cassie. And it was like totally fine. Um, and I didn't think it was anything weird. I was just like, sure, why not? That's just like a thing that you do. And uh, everybody else showed up. And what we watched Grave of the Fireflies. Uh, I can't remember why. I think one of our friends really wanted to watch it. And then, and then Bobby was the one that kind of made the final decision. I wanted to watch Grave of the Fireflies. If you haven't watched Grave of the Fireflies, it's fucking depressing. Um, it's a it's Japan in World War Two. It's an anime uh, about Japan in World War Two. Uh, I think like after the first nuclear explosion or something along those lines. It's uh, like I just remember it being like super fucking sad. Like it was like like it was bananas fucking sad. Um. But, but that's what we all like we all watched this movie <laughs> and for like an hour and a half we were all just like oh god what did we do but we were just like we're, we're gonna fucking follow through right we're not gonna stop this movie in the middle of it like we are gonna get to the fucking end of the movie you know because we were determined we were we were not quitters like we were gonna get to the end of this fucking movie um and so we did, and then I think I think everybody kind of had to like chill out for a bit, <laughs> just like recalibrate our brains. Uh, and what well, I don't even remember what we did to be honest. I think I think most of it just like sat around the table and just bullshitted for a while. And uh, after that, it was like maybe ten or eleven o'clock that we ended up splitting up, and. Like I said, Bobby was a big touchy-feely kind of guy. And before we left, he made sure that everybody got a hug. And he gave me this really big hug. Um, and, uh, and I was just like, all right, man, like, it's cool to see you. I appreciate it. Uh, that, was, that was nice. And he did that to everybody. And we got in our cars. Uh, and 
I get a text from from Adam telling me to like meet us at Rocky's house, and we so we go and we sit in Adam's car and we talked about just Bobby's weird behavior for a while, and we didn't know what was going to happen. We were kind of concerned about like the group in general because there were some tensions here and there um, of uh, a, a, like of what was going on, you know. And we were kind of uncertain about what to, what was going on. And everybody was everybody was kind of in a weird place because none of us had a job. the The group had these little dramatic things going on. The following day, I had an interview at uh, Express, uh, which is a high end men's fucking fashion store or whatever. Um. And I went in, the interview was like at 11 o'clock in the morning. So I'd gotten home at like two uh, and I woke up and showered and basically had to like fucking go to this interview. Uh, the interview went fine. I didn't get the job. Uh, they didn't tell me that. This is just like a spoiler. Like I never worked Express um, or anything. But um, I, and then I went uh, and I met another friend uh, and we got to uh, Rita's, which is a little um, Italian ice place in Pittsburgh that's like super popular. Uh, I man, I'm now I'm thinking about it is like I wonder if people in Pittsburgh are gonna go nuts because there's probably gonna be like restrictions if Rita's opens up in the in the state of the pandemic. Anyway, sidebar. Uh, not important. But I went and you know sitting there, and for whatever reason. The time has always stuck with me. Um, 3.12 p.m., I get a phone call from Bobby. Uh, and he says all of these nice things um, that are going to stay up here. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of I, I had to laugh a little bit because I was just like, all right, man, you're just being weird. I'm going to see you later because we're going to play Call of Duty, uh, you know, so like I'll just I'm going to see you tonight. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to be there tonight. And I was like, why? What do you like? What do you what do you got going on that, that you're not going to come hang out with your boys? Like you're not going to come to 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 boys night to fucking, we're, you know, like we're going to get some pizza and we're going to get like ripped up on fucking root beers and shit. Uh <laughs> and, and, and shoot some Nazis, like, come on. Um, and he was like, oh, I'm um, I'm probably going to go AWOL, and I'm going to India next week. I was like, you're going to India? Why wouldn't you tell us that you're going to India? And he's like, yeah, that's why I kind of did the whole goodbye thing. And I was like, all right, well, you know, let me know when you come back. And, like, we'll hang out. We'll go to fucking Eaton Park and and, like, bullshit and stuff. And he's like, yeah, of course. And I was like, I, you promise that you're going to let me know when you come back from India? And he was like, yeah, I promise. And then he hung up the phone. And I felt awkward about that call. I felt very strange about that phone call. Um, and from time to time, when I passed this particular intersection, which is, um, you know, a little ways from, from where I'm at now, my parents... I always think about the fact that I could have taken that instinct and I thought about this for fucking years and I dro and I drove myself kind of nuts with it when I was alone. Um, I would think that I could have made a really, really easy decision. I could have gone straight and headed for Bobby's house, but instead I took a right and headed back to my place. Had I headed back to Bobby's house, I might have been able to catch him, uh, stop him, do something. I don't know. Um, on my way home, I get a call from Adam, and he tells me he that he just had a weird phone call with Bobby, too. And I was like, yeah. And we kind of talked about what he said. And he confirmed the AWOL thing. And then I was like, hey, did he tell you that he's going to India? And he was like, no, I know he didn't tell me any of that. And I was like, yeah, it seems kind of kind of strange and weird. And he was like, yeah, it's a little weird. 
And we kind of just chalked it up to Bobby's being weird. He's going AWOL. You know, maybe he's grown another beard and getting another chain whip or some shit, you know. And then we went back and around um, maybe four-ish, something along those lines. Yeah, it might have been. It might have been. It's. It was after four for sure. Because I got home, and I decided that I'm gonna go and run the stairs. That was the thing that I was doing at the time. Like I had, uh, I had like the physical stamina to run uh, twelve flights of steps up and down for forty minutes. Uh, and I came in. I did some did some workouts, and then I was getting ready to jump in the shower. And I get a I get a text from Rocky. Uh, that just says nine one one emergency. Call me now. Nine one one emergency. Call me now. So I called him, and he goes, "Dude, uh, call, call Bobby and listen to his voicemail." I was like, "What?" And he's like, "Just do it. Just hang up the phone. Call Bobby. Listen to his voicemail." So I did, um, and it was standard for for the duration of it, right? And, uh, and then it goes into, by the way, if this is, I'm trying to think of the name that I want to go for this person. So give me, give me a moment. If this is Jack, yeah, this is what the voice must says. It says, if this is Jack, um, call 911 and send them to Scott Park. So full blown panic, hung up the phone. Uh, and you know, like I'm getting ready for the, to, to jump in the shower. I grab all my clothes. Uh, I, I jump in my car. I had a 96 Ford Taurus that I peeled out of this apartment complex. And I was like, I went 80 miles an hour down the road. Uh, there's a couple of people commenting. Yes, it, uh, it's, it's gonna, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't end super great. And, uh, right now, it won't end super great. And we get to the park, and uh, there's a bunch of cops, and I whip my car. I don't even park the car properly. Like, I'm pretty sure I parked on an angle. I might have taken up two spots. Uh, and I saw Adam and Rocky there, and I, and I jump out of my car, and I, like, ran towards them, and a cop stopped me and pulled me aside and was like, hey, uh, this, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to be there. And I was like, no, I do. That's my friend's car. That's my friend Bobby's car. I know that car. And the cop was like, no, you need to go sit with your friends. You need to go listen to what's going on with your friends. Be with your friends. We got this. We're going to take care of Bobby. Don't worry about it. And so I sat in Adam's car and I was like, what the fuck is happening? And uh, Adam was the one that found Bobby um, and basically said that he had committed suicide uh, in his car. And no, like none of us knew what the fuck to do, right? Like we were just kind of sitting there and we were like, what, like, what is happening right now? And I'm getting calls from my mom and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to say to my mom at this point. And usually, eventually, like after the fifth phone call, I pick up the phone and she was like, hey, Bobby's mom's here. She can't get a hold of him. She's getting concerned. Do you know where he is? And I was like, hey, I got to fucking go. I can't talk to you right now. And I hung up the phone and I was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. The cops and the paramedics you know, took his body and stuff. And then there was a detective who interviewed each one of us individually. And he was like, yeah, I'm just doing my job. And it was, it was kind of weird because he was like, he was trying to figure out if this was like a homicide in a way. And he was like, did Bobby have any enemies? Did anybody know do you think that somebody had access to Bobby's car? And I was like, he did. It was, it was him. I feel like we kind of know what the fuck happened, uh, officer. Like, I think we, I think we, we solved it. 
I think uh, uh, Bobby's enemy was, I think, Bobby. I think we, you did it. You did it, guy. Huh, Kamish? You fucking nailed it, bud. Can we stop talking about this? Uh, I, I, I have to go cry for an hour with my friends. Uh, and it was really, really fucking strange. I get that the cop was just trying to do his job, uh, but it was just like, what a weird fucking way to deal with it. And then before we left, because now me, Adam, and Rocky are standing in this park. It's pouring rain. Uh, and we're like, we have to go tell all of our friends. Because while my mom's been calling me, and I've got a bunch of texts coming in, fucking Adam and Rocky have been getting texts from all of our friends that are like, what's going on? Where are you guys? I got this message. I got this text. And somebody told me to listen to Bobby's voicemail. What's happening? What's happening? And we don't like, we don't know how to fucking break the news to people. So we were like, okay, we got to gather everybody to the, to the same spot. And as we're coming up with this plan, <laughs> three random Indian dudes just showed up and we were like, what is happening? Uh, and they were like, is that Bobby? Was, was that Bobby in the car? Are you guys, do you guys know Bobby? And I was like, who the fuck are you guys? Like, what is happening right now? <laughs> like, so, uh, so that's what we did. We, we kind of dealt with those Indian dudes and we decided, um, let's go grab Cassie. And we'll pick her up, and uh, and then we'll go to Rocky's house, and we'll gather everybody there, and we'll uh, and we'll break the news, like not knowing what this was gonna like. This was gonna like the only thought I had was like this is gonna shatter fucking everybody, and it did, and I had to call my mom. Uh, and I had to pass the news on to my mom who had to pass the news on to Bobby's mom. And, uh, it was, it was kind of really weird. Uh, I want to look at some comments before we go on. Uh, Sandry, suicide is hard on all this. Uh, my best friend who, uh, Don's on Susu also took her life and it still hurts. Yeah, it still, it still sucks. It's, it super sucks. Uh, Danny, who the fuck were those guys? I don't know who they were. It was very strange that they were there. Uh, I think between the cop asking me uh, all those questions and those guys, those that was like in the moment I couldn't think of it, but like when I think back on it, I was just like, who who are those people? Like, was this like some weird fucking mafia situation? Like, did he did did Bobby owe those guys money, or did they owe money to Bobby? Like, what the fuck was going on? It was super fucking weird. Uh, I never got an answer to who those guys were. They just like. They just kind of were like there. Um, yeah, it was really, really strange. Um, but we met at we 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 met at Rocky's house, and we all sat down and we broke the news to everybody, and it did exactly what I thought it was going to, and it fucking broke everybody, and we just sat there. One of our friends was in Australia, and we had to wait to get on the phone with her and break the news. One of our friends, uh, uh, and I ended up dating this girl for a while. She was in, uh, she, she was, she was at work and we had to wait till she was on break to tell her. I, I had to call a bunch of people and break it to them over the phone. And they kind of had very similar reactions to us, which was just like, no, that can't be right. Uh, yeah. It sucked because at that moment too, like I didn't know what to do and I'm literally watching all of my friends fall the fuck apart and I like didn't know. I don't know. I think I had this weird numb moment of like, I think I was, I was in a state of shock and disbelief and we eventually we were, you know, we decided let's, let's go home and reconvene tomorrow because, um, 
I don't know. Like there, there might not be anything else we can do right now. And I, and I got home and I sat in my car and for like a good 15 minutes, just screamed in my car. Cause I like, I didn't know what the fuck to do. And I just was freaking the fuck out. Um, like it, like by myself in my car. And I, and, and I decided then that nobody can see me do this because I, I took it upon myself in that moment. Nobody fucking asked me to, but for whatever reason I felt like I needed to was like, I have to hold it together because everybody else seems to be falling apart. And, uh, and I have to like take care of my friends. Not super, not a super great mindset to throw yourself in in this in this situation. By the way, um, and I went in and I held my. I like had a death grip on my phone because uh, the entire night, the only thing I could think of is I'm gonna tech, get a text from him. I'm gonna get a text from Bobby saying, "Surprise, gotcha." You know, some th like this is some real fucked up, like, uh, practical joke that he's, um, that he's playing on us. Uh, spoiler alert that that text or phone call never came. And the next day, uh, Adam had planned to go buy a drum set and he texted me. And he said, I'm still going to do this <laughs> because we were going to start a band. Uh, a bunch of college boys starting a, a, a pop punk emo band. What? Get out of town, you guys. Uh, where where I think Bobby was going to learn how to play the guitar. Uh, Adam was going to be on drums and they wanted me to be one of the lead singers. And uh, and I was like, sure, why not? I'll I'll give it a shot. I have. I have, I'm, I'm terribly afraid of singing in public, but this seems like a good thing to do. <laughs> so we went and picked up this drum set because that was the plan. The plan was to fucking go get this drum set and start a band over the summer. That was going to be a thing that we were going to do that year. So we did. And then we went to... Uh, and we and like we kept... I don't know... I think we, we tried to sidestep the whole thing and, and try not to talk about it. Um, but it always came down to it. And then we met up at, uh, at a Moe's with all of the other nerds uh, and tried to figure out what to do. How do we move on? From this point on, the rest of the summer was basically... I didn't come home till at least four in the morning every night. Um, and that was because none of us wanted to leave each other uh, because none of us wanted anybody else to die. And uh, yeah, one of those nights was we, we all met, met up at Cassie's house and didn't fucking leave till like three three o'clock in the morning and then we went and and st fucking hung out in front of rocky's place and talked for like another two hours just like we were just so af I, I know i was for sure just afraid that like i just didn't want any more of my friends to die and i was so scared that it might happen again um i met a, <sighs> me cassie Adam and Rocky went to see his mom because my mom and his mom were close, it, it, kind of close. And my mom was helping her, helping Bobby's mom through it. And so we finally got to go see his mom. And I mean, it. this is like the mo one of the most fucking heartbreaking sights I've ever seen in my life. We didn't really know what to say. Nobody really knew what to say. And so we just sat there quietly with her. And then um, she asked us if he was sad. 
and uh, and I don't. I mean, I never thought of him as a sad kid, right? But that's kind of the trait of people that do end up committing suicide is that they never actually seem like they're um, they're sad or and it and there's so much stigma around it and there's so much like shame associated with the act itself um, that I think and, and and so much shame with like mental health itself that that people don't um, people don't want to talk about it and they and they don't um, huh how do I even put this they just don't let it out they just don't tell anybody about it because there's shame and you know i mean part of the part of the thing with mental health that i've learned is talking about what i'm feeling um and if there's something that somebody else can do to help is to kind of talk about that uh and that takes a that just takes a, a long time to kind of learn is how to communicate what you're going through and what you need. That's that it just takes like four fucking ever uh, to learn. And there's so much stigma around just being depressed or being anxious or having suicidal thoughts or having dark thoughts that people just don't fucking talk about it. And I think that's uh, kind of. Um, I don't know. I think that's a, that's an issue in society that we need to fix. Yeah. Uh, so when she asked me that, like, I really didn't know how to answer it. And, and then she handed me, well, she handed all of us three different notes. He had written three different notes. And this is, this is the moment where I was just like, holy shit, the kid fucking planned this out. The kid, the like he was so, he was so meticulous about everything that happened, right? And this is maybe three or four days after, um, you know, he wrote a letter to us, his friends. He wrote a letter to his parents, and then he wrote a letter to the paramedics, and uh, the letter to us was basically telling us that he can't uh he he felt like his journey with us had come to an end that he had uh served his purpose with us which i don't think was true uh basically like he had helped us in in every way that he possibly could have helped us which is like again is not that wasn't his prerogative like this kid was my best friend he was like my little brother you know like i wasn't looking to him to be the fixer to my problems i just wanted it i like i he was just my best friend that's all it was you know and he was everybody's best friend um uh no he did not uh i am hesitant on saying what he actually did um but he did not shoot himself. He he did something a uh, stranger, and I'm mildly hesitant on um, what he did. I want to get to these other comments in a in a little bit, so hang tight. Um, he, he also self diagnosed himself in in the letter to his friends, saying that he was uh, bipolar, which is possibly true. And then he said he had psychotic depression and, and, and I think schizophrenia as well. Um, the last two, I don't know if, if I've looked them up. I don't know if he had them and I think he self-diagnosed himself. Bipolar disorder, possibly. He was pretty impulsive. He was pretty reckless. Um, he, he, he would spend like when he, whenever his parents would give him money or like whenever he did end up getting money, he would always spend it either on us. Like if I was having a tough, tough time, he would just like buy me shit. I would never ask him to, but he would be like, come to Eaton Park. I'm buying you a meal, you know? Oh, I'm buying them a meal too. And I'm buying the, like he had that impulsive kind of 
trait. And then when he would go AWOL, that I think that was his depressive state. So the bipolar thing is probably true. The psychotic depression part of it was like, wh where did he pull that one from? I don't know. And I can't really talk about, I can't really talk to the effect of schizophrenia because I don't know if he uh, heard voices or not, but he did self-diagnose himself. And, and then he basically felt like he had served his purpose to all of his friends. And then he, um, that he didn't want to be a burden to us, which was like, that was, you, but you fucking never were. So like reading that letter, we, like there was so much flurry of emotions that came through. Right. And then we read the letter to his, um, uh, to his parents and his parents letter, uh, was basically, um, Hey, you guys are awesome. And this is not your fault. I love you guys very much. Like, this is not your fault. Uh, there's just stuff going on with me that I don't know how to talk about with to, to you guys and so on and so forth. The letter to the paramedics was, uh, talking about the fact that they need to get his body on ice as soon as possible. And so that his or organs can be harvested to help other people. So he had looked all this shit up. Um, and the, the paramedics thing, if you've ever seen the movie Seven Pounds with Will Smith and uh, Woody Harrelson and a bunch of other uh, actors, it's a really good movie. And I remember watching that movie with him and him saying like how noble uh, of an act it was, what Will Smith's character did in that movie. Um, and he was mildly enamored with it. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, and he and he put everything into effect because he told our friend Jack to call him at a particular time and listen to his voicemail uh, because it's going to be something that he should listen to. And um, I don't think he got around to it because uh, Adam and Rocky uh, had found him first and called 911 uh, as they were calling me. And um, so all of this was like this perfectly orchestrated plan, uh, which I don't know how long he had been planning for. At, at one point, um, we had gone for a walk uh, around his neighborhood, couple, uh, probably about a week or, week or so before all this happened, before he passed away. And I remember him talking about suicide and he said uh i think one of the statistics he kind of pulled out was one in 12 like one in 12 people will commit suicide and i remember him saying there's 12 of us in the nerds which means the likelihood is uh one of us will do it one of us will commit suicide and i was just like what are you talking about like, we're all here for each other. We all need each other. Like, we're, no, I think you're wrong. And I, and you know, um, I pushed back on him quite a bit uh, when he mentioned that. And then here we are, right? That letter was, uh, it was, I mean, it was tough to read them. Um, you know, I was, I was angry. I was sad. And I felt like, again, it was just like, I went back and thought about every single conversation that we had. And, you know, I think me and Adam felt like we should have been able to fucking stop him. We should have been able to, 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 um, to get down there and do something about it. So we were in that mindset and then we had the memorial and then we had the, uh, the funeral pretty much back to back within, within maybe a few days, within a week, all of this stuff was done, by the way. Memorial funeral within a week of him passing away. Um, it, we shared some stories and, you know, I, I did some speeches and eulogies and that is uh, one of the weirder moments of the funeral was, um, his mom 
came up to me and asked me if all of his friends would come to the uh, cremation. And I was like, oh, I don't know if anybody can handle that. Uh, I can't. And um, I got to go. And I just said, thank you. And I walked away. And then we all kind of stood around in a circle and were bullshitting. And, you know, there's a photo of it somewhere. But it was like, yeah, we were just trying to make the best of it. And for a number of years, so one of uh, our mutual friends, we started dating which was weird because I think it put a strain on the group for some reason that we were in this relationship and there was a bunch of drama that happened. Um, there was a lot of drama that happened. Uh, but part of it all, <laughs> all, all revolved around like certain members of the group trying to maintain some kind of normalcy uh, when things were kind of, you know, as they do, they keep moving forward, but it doesn't mean that you don't forget about them. I don't think there has been a day in the last 10 years that I haven't thought about Bobby. Uh, I, I kind of think about him all the time. Uh, it, he's, it's just like a thing that's running in the back of my head, you know? And for years, I would say at least the first five years, I blamed myself for what happened. I blamed myself for not, for, for making that decision to turn right and not go straight for making that decision to, not see the signs when the signs were right in front of me um, and not being able to save my friend. Uh, and I was, I don't know. I like the more I thought about it, the more I was like, really all I would have done that day is, you know, move the timeline down with how well he had planned this. There was no way that he was going to, not executed at some point. So if I would have gone to his house and stopped him from getting to that park, I would have stopped him for how long exactly would have been the question. Um, I don't, I don't know, but that's sort of what I realized is that I don't think there was a way to stop him and, uh, and, and, and blaming myself for it didn't, didn't really seem to help in any way. Um, and you know, and part of it is because like I said, he would come to every single fucking comedy show. He was at every single big comedy show. And so what stand up is there are moments where I'm, where I, you know, when I do feel low and when I do get depressed and, I, I have anxiety. Like I, I have anxiety every time that I try to do a show. Like, like I have, I like these virtual shows that I'm doing, I have anxiety day in and day out about them. Um, and, and, and I think like, well, am I letting him down? Am, am I like, is he, will he like this material I'm doing? I like, I don't even know what his political viewpoints would have been. Um, I'm sure it would have been, it would have been similar to mine with more of a nihilistic and existential twist. That's, that's kind of what, <laughs> what I think his political beliefs would have been. Um, but um, I, I mean, I, I think about that stuff all the time is whether what I'm doing is, would, would, would it make him proud? Will he still, would, would he still attend these shows? Um, and every year on this on on on, to, on this day, I've, I've done something a little bit different, but it usually involves, I don't know, going down memory lane like what I'm doing now. Uh, I've stopped I've stopped going down memory lane to the point where I look at the intersections and wonder what life would have been if I would have made that if I would have gone straight and not left if I would have picked up on the signs or anything, and just kind of look at them for what they are and say, yeah, I'm not gonna. This is. This is a, a day that I, I don't think I will, uh, I will be forgetting anytime soon. And it did. I mean, you know, a lot of the friends that I had at that point, I don't really keep in contact with all that much anymore. We kind of drifted apart, um, all 12 of us. There's a, here and there, I will text my ex, you know. Um, there's a couple of our friends that I do talk to that have come to shows that have, you know, uh, I've got to hang out with on occasion. 
um, and still will keep in touch via text and stuff. Uh, but but I kind of had a feeling. Remember how I said like I needed to keep the group together, and that was sort of my imperative. It really had a stress on um, <laughs> my relationship with this girl. Let's call her Megan. And uh, uh, I mean, I was just fucking such an anxious mess. And she had to basically see me virtually break down every single like like every time that I had a moment of pure anxiety and breakdown, I would just like bust out into tears, uh, like be uncon like it was bad. And it was always when we were like getting naked for whatever reason, that's when it would hit where my anxiety would peak and then I would just fucking fall apart. Uh, and that's not like a thing you want somebody to do, right? Like when you're getting naked with them and it's all consensual and great and stuff. And then you're like, oh, cool. Like we get to see each other naked. And then one person like just kind of breaks down and has a, it starts crying and has a mental breakdown. That's like not a thing that <laughs> that, that moment is supposed to do. I've watched a lot of romantic comedies uh, and that has never been a scene in any romantic comedy. Uh, <laughs> not that romantic comedies are uh, examples of life, but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I like, that's the, she, she might've been the only person that really saw me kind of have the breakdown and like go through processing what Bobby's done. Cause I never let anybody fucking see it. I never let anybody see it. I didn't let my family really see it. Um, literally two days after all this, uh, my dad, my dad and I had this huge argument because he wanted me to get a job. And it was like, it's not like I'm not trying to, you know, it's just things are tough. And he was like, oh, I get it. Your friend died. Well, he's gone. Get over it. And I was like, that happened like two days ago. Holy shit. <laughs> like, so at that point, it was just like, all right, this relationship is fucking done. So, you know, there's no, there's no salvaging it after that comment. Uh, so if anybody's wondering why I have a terrible relationship with my dad, uh, there is an example. And, uh, uh, I just, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, it was, it was hard. There's, there's really nothing else to say about it and, and not nothing else to say, say about it in, in terms of like, you don't really get over something like this, right? Like it's a part of who you are. Um, and you're, you're going to carry the weight with you, but you learn how to, you learn how, how to carry that weight. You learn how to, um, to move forward with it and you learn that it's not their life is not about that one day right his life is not about that one day that happened 10 years ago which is part of the reason why i think i have these memories where certain things certain days will 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 remind me to be like oh yeah i remember doing that that fucking awesome thing with bobby i remember going to the park with him i remember you know, sitting at Eaton Park with him till 2.30 in the morning, fucking down in my eighth cup of coffee, you know, wondering if my kidneys are going to be functioning in the morning or not. You know, and his third molten lava cake where he'd complain about his tooth and I'd tell him to go to a dentist, but he fucking wouldn't, you know, driving down and um, and, and and giving each other pep talks, uh, talking about girls and stuff. Like, that's that's who he was. And that's 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 his legacy here um that's what that's kind of what i what i take out of it or i try to or i try to remind myself of it anyway with that said um i think that's 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 all i have to say about it for now i have tried to turn this into stand up and it doesn't work uh, it just, I, every time I've delivered it on stage, there's just like anger and it's too sad. And like, all my jokes are too dark. Um, and they, and people like don't feel comfortable with it. And I don't feel, I don't think I've felt particularly comfortable with it. Um, I'd have to talk about it in, in, a, in, in similarly to, to the way that I did it here. And this was kind of looser and rantier as these videos uh, sometimes tend to be, um, but if I was to write it into a thing and I might, and I don't, I don't really know how, in what format or how I would do it, but, 
it would have to be a little bit more constructed to make it work on stage. I think if I even want to do it on stage or if I want to write it for a story or whatever the fuck I, whatever creative channel, because that's really the way that I process shit is through like the avenue of comedy and, and, and creative endeavors and things of things of that nature um, is, is like, that's just the way that I process shit. Uh, yeah. But I, I mean, that's, that's sort of, uh, I've dealt with it for 10 years and for a long time, I blame myself for it. I don't anymore. Um, and you just kind of learn how to carry the weight, <clears throat> learn how to carry the weight instead of just carrying the weight. Uh, but let's, uh, let's look at some of, uh, the comments that popped up. Uh, of course you were in shock. Yeah. Processing this is, uh, so is so closely is, is, is a mind fuck. Yeah, it definitely was. It a hundred percent was, um, I didn't, uh, I mean, none of us, none of us really thought it would, it would happen to him. Um, or really any of us. I don't think anybody expects it to happen to, to any of us. Uh, wait until you're old like me. Everyone is dying. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. I uh, <laughs> I think this is in terms of talking about mental health is uh, they're ashamed to ask for help. Yeah, I think that's part of it. I actually, because, because of this whole ordeal, I wrote a whole album surrounding mental health specifically because of like having to deal that album might have been what kind of snapped me out of blaming myself. Um, writing that album and listening to Stuart Huff talk about his grandmother were the, I think the two things that, uh, pulled me out of, um, blaming myself for it. Uh, Danny, there are, there, there's the time afterwards when you think of these th red flags you should have picked up on and then the survivor survivor's guilt sets in. Yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of what it is. Um, can't talk about your feelings. Our culture isn't great to see that that's, that is a weakness it has. And, uh, and it's pretty, uh, pretty silly and, uh, doesn't, doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> Uh, there's a con condition called impulse control disorder. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, I wonder if I wonder if that's kind of uh, an offshoot of of bipolar disorder or not. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. There are varying degrees of schizophrenia. The sense of being there to serve other people can be an indicator. Huh. Okay. Interesting. That is good to know. Thank you for clearing that up. Chances are you couldn't have stopped him. He would have done it one way or other if his mind was set. Yeah, and his mind was set. Uh, you know, so um, I don't think there. I, I would have delayed. I would have delayed the inevitable. Um, and I and and that was something that I mean that was really tough to kind of come to grips with, uh, which I think is why I wrote the album that I wrote. Is is that was that that process was me coming to grips with it. Uh, comedy often comes from a dark place, uh, but that may be, uh, but that may be a bit much. Yes. Yes. It, it, it probably was. It probably was. Um, I've tried to do it a few times on stage and it is, boy, people get real fucking uncomfortable real fucking fast. <laughs> Jesse, I'm glad you made it through these studies. I cried three times just watching it. Oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh yeah it's 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 a tough one but uh i i don't know if i can go to the park today that's usually what i do i go to the park and i and i just kind of sit there for a bit uh but i don't know um i don't know if i'm if i can do that the last couple times that i checked the park is closed off as it probably should be right now uh because human beings are uh we're, we're not very good at uh, to, to go back to earlier with impulse control, like when we, when it's just like, okay, the park is open and you can go there, but like, just kind of be careful and maybe like, don't bum rush the park. They're like, everybody go to the park. Like <laughs> that's what happens. So, um, uh, I'm going to get to Sandy's comment in just a second. Talking about my feelings usually makes me feel worse. Uh, I typically feel guilty if, uh, if I make others feel upset, concerned or uncomfortable, that's why I write depressing music instead. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, that's kind of how I do it with comedy too. Is I'm just like I, I, I'm like this is how I process things. <laughs> if I'm just kind of raw about it, people seem to get kind of weird. Maybe I'll process it through jokes. That'll be that'll be enough of a wall. <laughs> but I do end up getting you know having like deeper discussions about like feelings and stuff like that. Um, it took me a really long time to like be able to. I'd be that open about it like and I just am like if I'm not feeling well I'm just gonna say I'm not feeling well um and I'm going through anxiety or I'm depressed or I'm, I'm going through all this stuff but um yeah it's art art is definitely a way that I channel a lot of things that I don't know how to process very well uh Sandy uh I've been diagnosed with it and I'm not bipolar I just spend too much money uh on like food and weed <laughs> Two great things to spend money on if you want to spend money on it. <laughs> I I mean, I guess uh, I, I might have it at points too. Like I have to be really careful about it. And, but there are points where I'm just like, this seems like a fun thing to spend money on <laughs> that I do. Like I bought, I bought a new cable uh, and uh, I bought a new phone case. And then I was like, what else can I buy? And I was like, you're not really making money right now. <laughs> You know, like eighty percent of your income has come to a screeching halt, fella. Maybe you should, maybe you should pull back on uh, on purchasing uh, unnecessary things. Although I do have a pretty cool uh, Jeff Goldblum phone case um, that uh, I will I will try to I'll, I'll try to pull it out. Uh, uh, hold on, let me see if I can if I can grab it. Pardon me, you're gonna get a shot of my chest. Oh, that's a bright light. All right, let's see. Uh, can you guys see that? Oh yeah, that's that is the um, Jeff Goldblum phone case uh, that I think that was a requirement for me to purchase, especially being from Pittsburgh and he's from Pittsburgh. That's just a requirement. Everybody from Pittsburgh should have something Jeff Goldblum, and that is uh, that is that is my contribution. So, <laughs> uh, but I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, there's links to a bunch of shit in the comments if you if you if you want to take a look at those. Um, Jeff Goldblum is a national treasure. That is an accurate statement. Uh, his, he has a, a, a program on the Disney plus and it is, uh, it is the most Jeff Goldblum thing that you will ever see. And it's fucking amazing. It's just the best. You should all go check out the world. Is it, is it the world according to Jeff Goldblum? Uh, that is from, uh, Jurassic park. Actually, let me see if I can put it's upside down. Yeah, that is, that is uh, uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park. That's uh, Sexy Goldblum uh, from, from Jurassic Park. So, um, well, thank you. Yes, I, I love it. It's, 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 it might be my favorite thing that I own right now, other than like the computer and shit. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to wrap it up here uh, and, and, and let you guys carry on uh, with, the, with the rest of the day. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that kind of being open about this stuff also makes people feel less alone, which is also the point of writing a whole bunch of comedy about it to be like, it's okay, you're allowed to have feelings, and we can all learn how to utilize them. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna uh, take care of some stuff. I've got some writing to do uh, for that show next week. Uh, if you want to, May 22nd, there is a link to it in the comment section. Uh, my new album is coming out. So I got, I got some stuff that I'm excited to, to work on. Uh, and then some podcast stuff that I got to do. And uh, I'm going to let you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Uh, thank you for commenting. Thank you for hanging out with me. And uh, till next time, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.